If you want to survive and thrive on your own, listen to today's Preschool All-Stars story. Kirsten Worrell shares her story of hope, how she left an abusive marriage and needed to find a way to provide for her children. At the last moment, she took a leap of faith and went all in to start her own preschool. Now she can stay home with her children, set her own hours, and has a consistent income. Listen in to discover how you can survive and thrive on your own, too. Welcome to the Preschool All-Stars Podcast. I'm Bethany Johnson, and I'm joined today by Kirsten Worrell. We are so excited to have you. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for joining us. We're excited to, to talk with you. So I'm excited to hear about your journey and your preschool. First, I wanted to get a little bit of backstory about what you were doing before you decided to do all this. Yeah, so this has been about probably right out a year ago when I decided. And I had just lost my job as a nanny for four years, the same family, four and a half years. I Mm -hmm. loved it. And I uh, was actually in an abusive relationship with my children's father. And I decided that everything in my life had to make a change. We had to change. We, I bought a house with no job. (laughs) I bought the house. I made the change. I decided that everything's going to be different. I didn't know how I was going to do it or what I was going to do, but it was going to be different. And we were going to have a better life for the kids that I wanted them to have. And it's been about a year ago, I was introduced to Joy's um, program and it, I just, I love it. And you got it. You got that better life. (laughs) I did. I did did get it. Yes. That's wonderful. How many kids, kids do you have? Um, My own, I have my own two enrolled in all four classes and I have 15 kids enrolled in the school so far. Awesome. Awesome. Wonderful. How did you hear about Joy? Uh, actually, my children's step grandmother had uh, told me about the program. She said, "Hey, there's this lady that does these things that she helps open preschools. You could do that in your new house." And I was like, "Nope, I don't. <laughs> want to do that. <laughs> That's not for me. I don't want to do that." And she said, "Okay, you know, it's whatever." So another month goes by, and I was like, "I don't know what I'm going to do. I bought this house with my savings. I don't have any income. Like, I don't know what's going to go on." And she said, well, I just want to revisit this lady. You can get a free <laughs> book from her and you can uh-huh. check it out. And I was like, I guess I can just get the book. It won't do any harm. So yeah. How <laughs> old were the kids that you had nannied? Um, they ranged from nine to my own toddler. I had uh, like a two, almost two year old. Okay. And yeah. So we had, I had five of them. Oh, wow. So you had experience with preschoolers, but not in like teaching setting more in like, you know, watching the, I was a nanny too. And I loved it. That was like one of my favorite jobs I've ever had. I loved it. And do you have a degree or anything? I don't actually. I actually did college. I graduated high school, but then I got married straight out of high school to my ex-husband and it just, you know, life happened and I got divorced and I got a job and then I had kids and it was just, you know, life was kind of happening while I was watching instead of me taking control of it. So I, I hear that. Yeah, I hear that. Well, it's all, the, one of the best parts about the program is that you can start this whole business without having to have a degree. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, let's talk about your preschool. What is your preschool called? My preschool is called Pisky Preschool and I okay. live on Pisky Road. So it's a well-known road in the community. So people immediately know, oh, it's on Pisky Road. Oh, you know? perfect. Perfect. And where are you located? Uh, I'm in Princeton, West Virginia. So Okay. Awesome. Southern Virginia. Yeah. And where do you run it out of? Is it in bedrooms and living rooms, garage? It's actually my home. My original goal was to do it out of the basement and part of the garage, but I very rapidly ran out of time and money on that project. Mm -hmm. So my children's grandfather was like, you know, you could put it upstairs in your bedroom and your living room. And it's, you know, it's a big house and yeah. I have the other kids here. And I said, Oh, I don't like that. I don't want to do that. So I mm-hmm. waited until the 13th hour to finally be like, oh, okay, maybe I'll just do it upstairs. So I do it yeah. in my, what used to be bedroom, there's bedroom and three big closets and a bathroom. And then a huge classroom area that was the living room. Nice. Nice. You make it work. And then I'm sure down the line, you know, once you figure it all out, you can expand to wherever you need to in your house. Yeah. It's still a goal. Yeah, absolutely. And how many kids did you say you had? 15? Uh, 15, yes. Okay. And so how do your classes work? How many days a week and what are the times? I have um, four classes, five days a week. So I have the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 to 1130 and 12 to 230. And then the Tuesday, Thursday, 9 to 1130, 12 to 230. Awesome. Awesome. And how many kids are in each class? Uh, Six, where it's just me. That's our uh, state regulation. So six. Okay. So are you licensed? 
I am licensed. Yep. Yeah. Okay. As licensed. a, is it like a family or a home, like a family daycare license or is there a separate preschool license in, in Virginia, West Virginia? It's, um, I kind of am in not the educational category, but not the daycare, but I'm also umbrellaed under both for different okay. things. So it's really confusing. Yeah. But I, I'm actually technically currently licensed as a crisis care center because oh. I opened during the pandemic, which actually oh. helped me out because where everybody else had to shut down, I'm allowed to stay open for essential workers, even if they shut the state down. So I get oh, to stay Oh, that's, re- that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. Really lucked out. So I'm a, a facility is what they call it, but a crisis care center. At okay, moment. cool. That's awesome. That's yeah. really cool that that worked out that way. And what are your prices? What's your price for the classes? I do $100 a month for the two-day class and $150 for the three-day, where it's our introductory year. I plan on trying to up it a little bit next year and bring in some new stuff. And we're about to run our second raffle. I actually ran a raffle to open the preschool before I even had a preschool. Oh, and yeah. So we're going to do that again. Shortly. What do you give away in your raffles? Is it like tuition? Oh, uh, no, I'm going to do it. The parent who sells the most tickets will get a free month of tuition, but the raffle okay. we had, um, got, I had $1,800 and stuff to give away last year. So that's a really good idea. I hadn't thought of that doing a raffle. Awesome. Well, that's so cool. Um, let's, so how did joy and preschool all-stars help you get set up in all this? Oh my gosh. I would not be set up at all (laughs) if it weren't (laughs) for them. Honestly, like the first speed bump that I had in the road, actually, I had, um, just gone, you know, I was super excited and I'd just gone to the DHHR to try and get my licensing started. And they sat me down and immediately were like, you can't do what you want to do. And I was Uh, like, uh, why? They said, you can do a daycare, but you can't do a preschool. And I was like, oh, shoot, you know, and I was discouraged. I actually texted Joy, like I on Facebook Messenger, I was like, there's no way this lady, you know, does all this stuff, is going to write me back. And she wrote me back immediately and was like, no, 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 look at this, tell them to do this, this, and this. And I ended up making, like, I told them, we're going to figure this out. And they ended up making several phone calls. And they were like, oh, you can do this. And you don't have to have You can open the preschool in your house. So I was like, fantastic. Oh, that's awesome. So originally they told you it because you didn't have a degree. Is that what it was? But it was hardly the degree, but it was actually where it was in my home. They said that it, oh. it could be an educational facility as well as an in-home facility. Oh, and interesting. So, hmm. Yeah. It was part of that. I'm not under either category, but I'm under both. It's so weird. how. It is yeah. Here. Yeah. Out here, I'm in Las Vegas and they, I'm licensed as a home daycare because they don't even have a preschool, like a home yeah. preschool option. And I just, it's a preschool, but that's right. where our license falls under. Uh, yeah, I get it. So tell me about the time where you got your first sign up. How did you go about even getting sign ups? Oh gosh, I was so nervous. Okay, so what what I did, like I said, I, I did the raffle, which got my name out there heavily in town. Mm-hmm. I have a, we live in a small town, like it's West Virginia. Everybody, yeah. Everybody. yeah. So you know, you go out and you start talking to businesses. Hey, would you like to donate to a raffle? I'm opening a preschool. And then that gets word of mouth out there and does that. Mm-hmm. And I was also attending events to, you know, pass out. I did flyers was my main thing. Okay. And I actually did tons and tons of flyers and I did close to 4,000 flyers. I think I only ended up doing half because I ran out of time, but I walked them like 15 miles in the wow. heat to yep. uh, pass out the flyers. And I got my first call and I was a nervous wreck and they, <laughs> I was like, there's no way they're going to sign up. They're going to see it's in my house and be freaked mm-hmm. out. And, and they love it. And I, it's just everybody it's go, It's going great. The kids love it. I love it. That's so exciting. Happy. Yeah. That's awesome. And what were, what were some of the, I mean, you talked about, um, you know, the beginning, they told you you couldn't open a preschool. Were there any other like big roadblocks that you found in the way? It was mainly just finding the finances to update it to be a facility, like to pass the code inspection. Yeah. And then again, the challenges of opening during the pandemic, just trying yeah. to get people to be allowed to come out to inspect it, to open mm-hmm. in time. Like, oh I yeah. I'm trying to get the fire marshal every day. I was like, you guys have to come. I've got like two weeks, please just come and yeah. send me the certificates. Like nobody would, you know, they, even with masks back then, they were like, no, we're not allowed to send people into homes and this and that. So it was really mm-hmm. difficult to just get the licensing at all. Because yep. they wouldn't do it online because they had to do the inspections. And they said, right. well, we're not inspecting anybody. But that's how I got the um, crisis care center is they, you know, it's like, okay, if you're going to open as a crisis center, then we have to send somebody out. And I was like, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. That's cool that, that that worked out that way. And what's something that you knew you, that you wish you knew before you started all this? I wish I knew that I 
was more capable than I thought I was. Like mm-hmm. I, you know, the confidence to get it up and going and talking to people and getting out there and being like this nervous wreck of, you know, the rejection, like it, it's going to happen too. Like there's a lot of rejection. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay. and it's okay. Cause it doesn't mean that you can't have an awesome preschool. And actually something weird that happened is, is with the pandemic, all three of the other preschools in town that were private pay, the only other three all shut down. Oh, wow. Crisis centers. So I'm like the only one in town right now. Wow. So they're still shut down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they like they closed. They closed. Wow. Oh, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. It's sad to see so many places like that closing, but it is. I mean, it does. It helps. (laughs) It helps you out right now. I was kind of the same way. Like I started right when the pandemic started and I was trying to get licensed right as the pandemic was starting too. And I was like, no one's going to want to do this. No one's going to want to bring, send their kid. But then it turns out like that's exactly what they want is small group classes with like one teacher, not a lot of kids running around. Exactly. They were more receptive because they were like, we want them to socialize. They can't go to the mm-hmm. playground. They can't go anywhere. We want them to have that interaction. And I was like, right. well, I'm, I'm your place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it, it kind of worked out. So what are your next big plans for your preschool? Um, I'm actually about to open enrollment back up. I'm trying to get enough to fill uh, double my a wait list so I can bring in my co-teacher and I would love to bring my co-teacher in and have, you know, twice the class sizes. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually about to start the 30 day challenge for online preschool. I'm going to go ahead and do an online version. I haven't yet. And I hadn't really considered it yet, but I feel like there's no reason not to. So yeah, you might as well. So, might as well. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. And then we're continuing to work on the basement to transfer it into a preschool. It's just slow. Process. Yeah. 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 So you have, do you have the space to, if you brought in a code teacher, you have the space to do like 12 at a time? Yes. I was approved for 12 at a time. Um, okay. max. That would be my max limit for the class. Okay. So then you're, you're just working on getting the signups for that 12, but you have the space and you have the license and you are, do you already have a code teacher in mind? I do. Yeah. I've got a code teacher and he's, it's actually he, but he's fantastic. So that's awesome. That's wonderful. What would you say to the women who are on the fence about joining all stars or starting their preschool or doing any of this who are, you know, back where you, where you were a year ago saying, no, I don't think I can do this and wanting something more and needing to make an income, but on the fence. Well, they absolutely need to join all stars because I started it hesitantly. Like I'll do a month of it. And if it, you know, I don't know if Mm -hmm. I really need this or if it's going to help, but it has been the factor that has been the key to the success. I wouldn't, it wouldn't be what it is without them. And, you know, you go in there and you get a question answered immediately. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, I need help. Like, I'm freaking out or just moral support. Like, oh, I don't know what to do today. I'm having a panic attack. And they're like, it's okay. Do this, this, and this. And that's yep. you absolutely definitely need to be an all-stars for sure. Because, I, again, I was on the fence. And I was like, I don't know. And I was on the fence about the whole thing. I was like, I don't think I want to do this. But if you if you think you're able and it's something that you can do, it's the best way to make income. Because my whole goal was to keep my kids at home. I had nannied them. I didn't want... Right. Them in daycare. I didn't want them in school somewhere crazy out of my right. sight. Are you planning on homeschooling your kids all the way through elementary and all the yeah. way through? Yeah. yeah. I do plan on homeschooling. Okay. So you can homeschool while you do the preschool? Mm-hmm. Because um, usually the homeschool hours are much shorter anyway. So when yeah. we're done at 2.30, then that leaves plenty of time in the afternoon for that. That's awesome. That's really great. Um, is there anything else you'd like to you'd like to share about your story or any words of encouragement for anyone out there? If you're thinking about doing it, I would definitely say that you should do it. Like take the leap, take the risk. I went out on a huge limb. It was not even a limb. It was a leap of faith because I, again, had put my life savings in a house and I proceeded to buy it with no job, no income, no plan, no nothing. And I was Mm -hmm. like, I'm going to find a way to make this work. And it's just determination. And again, you definitely need to be in the group because Joy's not even just joys with everybody in the group their you know input is invaluable in this whole process because it's it's just you can't get that type of support anywhere else and she knew exactly what she was doing and I never questioned the step it was laid out perfectly this is what you do this is what you do next this is how you get it and it was the cog that made all of the pieces fall in line yeah absolutely absolutely what do you think what would you say you're most proud of when it comes to starting, I mean, other than just starting your own business from scratch, what's, what's your point of pride there? Yeah, I think just, I get overwhelmed with just seeing the kids and how they start to learn and just how overnight they'll be writing letters all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. My own kids overnight, they can, you know, sign the alphabet and write their names and write all the letters and know all the planets and just everything that we do in class and seeing them develop and the parents writing me, you know, saying my kid is 
leaps and bounds progress and it's because of you and thank you so much for doing this and we're so glad and we love it and it's just you know heartwarming and you almost mm-hmm. get choked up because you think like I did this and I did it to make a difference I did it for my family but I also mm-hmm. did it to make a difference in the community and that's what I feel like I'm doing is you know just those kids showing them like hey it's fun we can have fun here and learn and and they love it and I love it <laughs> absolutely I love I love seeing that like moment where they finally pick something up and you're like, it's it's yeah. the best feeling in the, in the world. It is. It is. Yeah. Well, Kirsten, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so, I wish you so much luck on your journey and it's, your story is awesome. Starting from, you know, just taking a leap of faith and it's working out and that's so great. And your online preschool, I'm sure will be just as great. I, I started the online preschool. I had to open it before my in person because of the pandemic. And it's, I love my online kids. They're great. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. At first I was a little like, Oh, I don't know if I could do this online, but no, it's fun. It's really, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm glad I was excited to start it. So yeah, I wish you all the best and thank you so much for joining us. You have a great weekend. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. If you'd like to have a success story just like that one, I invite you to join our preschool all-stars. It's my exclusive membership community where you'll get mentorship from me with weekly Q&A lives, support and guidance and friendship from hundreds of women on the exact same journey as you starting running and growing their preschools, and my exclusive access to Preschool University, every training and done-for-you file that you'll need for every milestone on your journey to help you start, run, and grow your preschool. We've all been there, and we've got the exact same steps that you need to go through, but we do it all very quickly so that you don't have to waste time or money doing the wrong things at the wrong time. We'd love for you to join our Preschool All-Stars membership. Just go to preschoolallstars.com or click the link in the description to a immediately jump into Preschool All-Stars. Again, go to preschoolallstars.com and we'll see you there.